Hey kids, Pastor Brent here with a world premiere Whole Cut Kids TV. Stay tuned. Here it comes. Drum roll, everybody. Hey RAs, Pastor Brent here, and as promised, we talked about Wednesday night at a campfire stove and a buddy burner. We're going to make that today. So here's our finished product. So you've got this little thing here that with your buddy burner will slide into your stove but uh, you need to probably know what you need to have to make it and how to make it so let's get into that so we're going to start off first thing to get our finished product is you're going to need a number 10 can now if you guys don't have some of these or just a can bigger than the smaller can that you're going to put in to be your buddy burner i've left a couple of these at the church office that you can swing by and pick up or you can go out and get your own uh, it doesn't matter but what you're going to want to do is, of course, your buddy burner is not, it's going to be, it can be a tuna fish can or some kind of small can, just needs to be able to fit inside the stove. You're going to set it up here and you're going to trace off an area that would allow the stove, the buddy burner to slide in. Okay? Now, trace that off, but you're also going to need vents for the airflow to come through in the top. So you can do it a couple different ways. Okay guys, so to put the vent holes in here, you've got an old fashioned uh, bottle opener like this. Stick it on here and you want to do four, five, six holes across the top like this. And that's going to give us the airflow that we need to keep the buddy burner. Okay, that's five. Let's do, let's do one more. Right there. All right, so that's good. Now we've got our vents across the top can also get a screwdriver and a hammer and you can turn it on its side and pound it in like that okay make sure you get mom and dad to help you because you could get hurt because some of this stuff's got a little edge to it a little dangerous um, but you're going to need to put several holes in the top so if you look I've got on mine probably four or five six holes in the top for your vent so that's going to have that prepared to cut out the opening for our butter, buddy burner to go into, you're going to need a pair of tin snips, okay? Just cut along the line that you've drawn, that you've traced, and then remember this is going to have a sharp metal edge, so what I did is I took a pair of channel locks and a, chair, a pair of pliers, and I just bent back the sharp edges to get it out of the way so, so we don't get cut. So have mom and dad help you with that. And I traced out the area for our buddy burner to go into, so we'll just take the tin snips, and this is going to be sharp, so you're going to want to have mom or dad cut this probably. Uh, I don't want you guys getting cut, so follow along on these lines as good as you can. Alright, there's one side. Got to get through that rim, there we go. Bring that back a little bit, it'd be easier to cut. So now you've got that opening, you can just bend. So you can also bend it back this way if you want to, uh, and then when you get done, you can just lower the flap back down, or if too much air is getting in, it's windy or something, you could lower that down to kind of keep the air uh, from blowing anything out. All right, so that takes care of that can. This can could be, like I said, just a tuna fish can or some smaller can that'll fit inside the stove, but you're going to need to have a fuel source for the fire, and that's going to come from these strips of cardboard. So uh, everybody's probably got some Amazon boxes or something like that laying around the house. I just got some cardboard. I laid, I laid down my can, and I traced where the top of it was, and I just did that all the way across like this. And then, using a pair of scissors, or if you want to use a razor blade or a utility knife, that's what I did. Uh, before you make, if you're going to use one of these, you're going to want to make sure that you don't cut your mom or dad's table or what you're cutting on. So have a, another couple pieces of cardboard underneath it. And I just went and scored across the line to get my piece. 
it breaks real easy like that. And then you can take the razor blade and just cut it the rest of the way just fine. And you've got your strip for doing your buddy, buddy burner. Now, I've already got some of them cut. What you do is you take them and you roll them really tight. Because what we're going to be doing after we roll these really tight, we're going to fill up our can as tight and as full as we can so that we're going to have our fuel source here right here. Now I've made this one stick up really tall so you can see it, but you're going to want this cardboard in here packed in as tight as you can get it, okay? So uh, this has got to be the same height as the others, okay? So you're going to have your small cardboard in here just like this so that it'll slide in here, but before we can do that, we're going to have to take this gulf wax or paraffin or beeswax or candle wax, whatever y'all got that can do that. Melt it in some kind of an old pot or pan that you've got laying around that you don't really care about. Pot with a can in it that I have put our paraffin wax in. And I'm holding it with a pair of channel lock. Pour it over the cardboard so that the cardboard soaks up all this paraffin wax. Alright, as so you can see now that I've got the wax completely melted. And I've never touched it with my hands because you could definitely get burnt. So that's what these channel locks are really good for. Now I'm going to take it. I've, and I've, had to come in because it was raining outside, but I'm going to pour it slowly over my cardboard here to let it all soak up. Okay, we want to fill every little nook and cranny of that corrugated cardboard full of this wax. Okay, so I used two of the oops, I used two of the blocks of the paraffin. Like I told you, you will have to let it cool and do another one. So now I've got to go do two more blocks. You may have to let it cool a little bit and keep pouring, but you're going to want to pour till it gets right here to the top and then let it cool. And then when you want to make a s'more, or you want to cook it, you want to fry an egg or some bacon or sausage, you've got your very own camp stove and your buddy burner. Now, I'll make sure you've washed this before you cook, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put aluminum foil over the top of mine. Uh, make sure you know, cover up your holes when you put the aluminum foil, because we do need that airflow to keep the fire burning. Hey, all right, so now we've had time for that to cool. I'm going to light it, and I'm going to fry a piece of bologna on top here. And remember, I told you I wanted to put some aluminum foil just to keep things protected. So we're going to light our stove. Look at there. Got our wick that's burning. And then we're going to slide it underneath the campfire and get this thing good and hot. And you can see I left the vents open. Okay, let me stop it. All right, guys. Okay, all right. So here's the stove in action. So we're getting that top warmed up, and I'll put that slice of bologna on there in just a minute. Like I said, there's the holes that we're talking about. You can see the flames coming up through the holes, too, right there. All right, give it just a little more time to get hot. But you can see how that is just tearing up like a fuse, feeding that fuel from all that. Oh, I see the heat coming out. I can put the bologna on right now. Put that bologna on here and see what happens. That pop you heard is the different, uh, the metal is changing temperature. So it's heating it up. Oh, all right, RAs. You can hear that bologna sizzling and popping. It won't be long. Our little campfire stove will pop that bologna right up for us to have for a snack. All right, so we've cooked our bologna. You might be wondering how to blow this out. Well, if you blow it, you're only going to make it worse. So you're going to have to smother the flame. So grab those channel locks, take it, flip it upside down, and it'll go out. So have fun making your own uh, buddy burner and campfire stove or a hobo stove. And But make sure you have mom and dad help you, okay, because there's some real tools out here. All right, take care, kids.